So I think I'm going to start a little bit earlier, like uh, my colleague finished b before I expected. So um, for who was not here in the, my last presentation, my name is Adamo. I uh, work for Percona as a senior technical engineer. And in this talk, uh, we're going to cover the indexes types in, in MongoDB. So uh, we have uh, more than 12 different indexes types in Mongo, and it's important to know which one to use uh, in the day by day. Uh, just one quick question. Who is using Mongo in production here, like a production environment? Okay, cool. And are you using for like a data analysis uh, or for like a, as the main database or is just a secondary database or what kind of? Uh, the main database. Main database? Okay. You said like? Uh, analytics. Analytics? Okay. Probably you have a lot of index, right? <laughs> okay. Oh. not supposed to happen. Okay, so here uh, we'll cover a little bit about like when we have more index than we need, what happened with the database. So I'm gonna cover the performance thing. So index are good, but not always good. And yeah, this is my presentation. You can find me at Adam Utonet. My name is like a primary key. Now it's not a common name, it's not a common last name. So if you type that, you'll find my whole life on Google. So yeah, I'm based in Sao Paulo, Brazil, huh, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna cover what is an index uh, for who is, is starting right now uh, with MongoDB and database as well. Uh, how the indexes works behind the scenes. Uh, the cost to maintain an index, so that's uh, a little bit trick. Uh, and the different types of um, Mongo, the indexes in MongoDB. So, um, and then we have a question, question and answer at the end. So yeah, uh, what's an index? Uh, in this case, I'm using a library to simulate my database. And the bookshelf here is my collection or table. Uh, we have the primary key, which for me is the colors. So it's organized by the primary key right now. But what happens if uh, we are asking the database to look for something different, uh, for example? Could you please me find all the books writing in 1977 and 1978? So we see here like the, there is no order for that. And what effect database does when we run, when we ask this question and we don't have the index, the database is gonna read all the books to gotta, like to filter what book uh, they should return to us. Uh, this is called uh, collection scan, that's what, uh, Rick said before, so when we have we have the collection scan, this is exactly what's happening. This guy here is my query optimizer, so the only thing that he can do is read the entire documents and say, "Hey, this is right. This is true uh, regarding the the condition that they pass in the in the query." So, and how does index work here? Uh, what the index can do to help? Um, index are just B trees, uh, but um, Balancing trees, um, and this is how an index should look like in real life. So, uh, this is very common in library. Uh, not sure he, if here in US, but uh, this is just organized by different kinds um, of subjects that I can ask for. Maybe by the author, maybe by year, uh, maybe for some other reason for subject. I don't know uh, exactly. So, it's way easier to come here and find the, the dates, like for example, the date that I'm looking for, and get the address of the book in the bookshelf. So it's gonna save a lot of time for the processor or for who is looking for these this books. And this is exactly what a, the index does in MongoDB or any relational database. I think it's a little bit smaller. Is it possible to read? I don't think so, right? Okay. It's gonna be a little bit ugly, but. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm running a query in one collection with uh, 100,000 documents, and I don't have any index here. So what I'm doing is 
asking the, the query optimizer to do exactly what I showed before. Uh, as computers are a little bit faster than us to, exam to open all the 100,000 documents and look for this information. In this case, I'm just looking for Percona name uh, in this, these documents. It took 350 milliseconds. So that's okay, that's fine. But you have one, if you have 1,000 queries running, uh, maybe per minute, you are spending a lot of processor time, a lot of memory to, do, to run this query. And even this I.O. if the data doesn't, ca doesn't fit in the cache. Um, so in this case, I have exactly the same query. I can skip this one, but just 100 documents and the execution time is zero milliseconds because there are less documents to exam examine. So uh, if the documents are smaller, it's gonna take less time, uh, depending on the size of the document or the size of, of the field that you are filtering. It's, it can take more time than just uh, like half a second. Uh, I can skip this one. I'm just showing, uh, sorry about the, the size, but I'm just showing when we have the index here in place, it's using the index to optimize the query. So it's looking first at the index that I show, and then it's going to check uh, the data in the disk. Uh, it's the same here. So uh, this is basically one uh, B3. Uh, we have a, like, it's organized by, by letter in this case because my filter is based on name. Uh, we have the leaf page here, and what the, the query optimizer does is it walks through the, this tree and say, hey, uh, is P more than A to Z? No, it's more than M to Z? Oh, it's, it, maybe it, it is in the left. So uh, instead of reading the entire collection, entire documents here, uh, probably the collection is going to be way bigger than that. It, it gets some shortcut. It takes advantage of the B3 to find the document quickly. So instead of reading a thousand documents, uh, all the, the, the database needs to do is walk through the B3 here. Uh, but of course, it's not free for the database to do that. So the index must be maintained. So the index must be up to date. And um, each index will cost a little bit more to write. So you need to think about the disk IOPS and everything else. Uh, the, the indexes are updated in real time. Toku MX, the previous version, I don't know if you, someone worked, have one, someone worked with Toku MX? No, uh, the Toku MX kind of cached these updates here in the index, the factual tree, uh, cached the updates and then flushed the updates later to gain some performance improvement. And yeah, if you have like a hundred indexes in the same collection, it's gonna slow down the, your write. Uh, if you are inserting one document and you have a hundred indexes, uh, it's gonna write a hundred times in, in the disk. So it's gonna spend a lot of uh, IO. Uh, not necessarily a hundred, uh, the database, the engine can combine some writes and, and spend, spend less, less writes, uh, IOPS to run that. Uh, this is exactly the same image, but uh, in this case, I'm adding the Percona, so there is a cost to find where the name should be should go, and if you need to do that a hundred times for each document that are inserting in a, in a collection, uh, it's going to slow down uh, your write performance. But the other hand, it's going to speed up your queries. But I don't think it's it's worth. Uh, MongoDB has a lot of different indexes types. They uh, like the underscore ID is the primary key. We have single field, which is just one field. Compound indexes, more than one. Text indexes, it's not a like Lucene, uh, it's just a basic text, it's not a full text search. It's, it's still basic, not a, comparing to the other database related to text indexes. Uh, we have also TTL, partial index, a lot of different geo indexes as well. I'm going to talk about them later. Um, Mood key indexes, hash indexes, sparse and unique. So um, the ed I underscore id is the default uh, primary key for MongoDB. Uh, one important thing is it is not a clustered index, so it's just a shortcut to find the address in the in the disk. So. MongoDB doesn't have any kind of a clustered index. Toku MX had in the past, but all the, the, 
reads is going to cost a lookup to find the document itself. Uh, single field is just one one field uh, index. Uh, it's basically when I indexed the name per corner of the previous slide. So even though it's a single field, a single field can help the query optimizer to take a smart decision. Uh, but on the other hand, MongoDB can use only, most of the case, just one index for each query. If you are using R, it can merge index or use more than one index, but most of the case, MongoDB is going to use just one index to perform a query. Uh, when single field is not enough, uh, enough, for example, if you are filtering for last name and first name, uh, for us, Brazilian Da Silva is a very common last name. So if you're trying to filter for this last name and you don't have any cover for the first name, the MongoDB is going to retrieve all the data and then filter these documents in memory. So it, it can slow down a little bit. Too. Even though it's using uh, index, um, it's going to slow down a little bit because we need to open the document and perform the, the comparison here. And that's why uh, multi-values like a, um, the compound index are useful. So you can have more than one index, index one field in the same index. You can use sort, uh, last name and first name, uh, age, or everything else that you need to, to run. And one nice thing about this is not only this one, but for the single field and compound index, you can have covert index. Uh, what is when you are getting the data, if you ask just for the value of this index, it's not going to go to the disk to read the data because the, the data exists in, in the memory. So, uh, Multi-key indexes uh, are used when we have array. So as MongoDB use JSON, we can have a document a field value as an array. So the only difference between the multi key and the standard key, like the simple, the single field key, is that in this B3, instead of having, instead of pointing for just one document uh, here, it, it's going to have like, if I have the array likes and I like my SQL and MongoDB, it's going to create my SQL here and MongoDB here. And if I have 1,000 different documents pointing to MongoDB or my SQL, it's going to put just the address of the documents here. So this is how indexes arrays works in, in MongoDB. Uh, one important thing about um, the, the arrays is that in the replication, MongoDB sends the whole array when you are adding or removing an array from a primary to a secondary. So if you are popping one element from an array, array and you have a, a thousand elements there, it's going to send a thousand elements from the, sec from the secondary. So it's, it's not, I'm not supposed to talk about that here of index, but it's a useful tip. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it depends, uh, depends on the number of reputable fields that you have. Uh, I, I mean, you need to use the more rest restrictive at, at the left uh, to optimize the, the, the query. So, for example, if everyone likes MongoDB, it, it's not a good index uh, to you. So maybe you can find another like more restrictive um, field to be the first in a compound index, for example. So try to keep the most restrictive at the first uh, field. It, it matters for, for MongoDB, so. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I went too far. Oh, here. Uh, yes, yeah, like, like I said here, it's, it's pointing to the same document. This is the only difference. Uh, there's no much to talk about unique indexes. They are unique. Uh, the only difference is you can use unique keys in a sharding environment. Um, because it's going to cost a lot to check uh, all the shards if the value is unique or not. So the maximum that you can use is a normal replica set. So it's not possible to create a unique uh, key in a sharded collection for performance reasons. So it, there's no way to. There's way to do, but it's cost too much. And if you have like a, a delay, not a delayed, but a lagged secondary, it's going to take too much to reply, like to check if uh, the index is unique or not. Yes, but not uh, for the whole chart. 
Uh, we have a plenty of uh, geo indexes. Uh, Mongo offers a, a like built-in library for that, and I know a lot of people that use for this reason to make geo localization and get a taxi or everything else. Uh, we have three different types. Uh, the first one consider our plant as a flat place, so it's not so precise in distance because it's considered like a flat surface. Uh, it's the 2D indexes. We have the 2D sphere that considers her, uh, our plant as a uh, sphere, so there's not much to say. And geo haystack, which is very similar to geo hashes. Do, do you know geo hashes? It's kind of, they create some big squares in, in our map and then give some letters for each uh, square. And you have like a hash with different letters, it's gonna go to a specific place in the hair, in, in, our, in our planet. And the only advantage of this one is you kind of split the data in small chunks and you can uh, easily find what is nearby. So instead of having a collection with, a, I don't know, two billion documents, you can have small logical collections with, uh, I don't know, a hundred documents. Depends on how big do you want your first square. Uh, we have text index. Uh, they are very similar to single field. You can use a compound index. So all the index that I'm, I'm showing here can be used in a compound index with some restri restrictions sometimes. Um, they are not, a, like I said, there's not a, it's not a full text search. It works well, so you can take advantage of uh, case incentive uh, finds. You can use collection if you have like a, I don't know, maybe uh, the Russian alphabet with Chinese, so you can use that to filter and order the data uh, in the way that you want. And then you, when you are running some some query, you can give some way to determine to a few words to organize the, re the response. We have sparse and filtered. They are they seem very similar, but there is a big difference between them. Uh, while sparse index only index fields that has the field, uh, while sparse index only indexes uh, documents that has the field, in fact, the sparse is going to filter uh, the value before creating the index. So, uh, for a sparse index, if I don't have the field name, I'm not going to index this this document, for example. And for a filtered index, I can filter only who is older than 10 years, for example. Uh, to make this, this index smaller and to use less space in disk and memory, just for performance. Mm, hash, hash indexes are commonly used in shards, so you can, you can have this, but it's almost useless. Uh, it's used to split the writes between shards. It's gonna create a hash and kind of, it's not a running robin, it's just a random uh, write to a specific uh, shard. Uh, yeah, we have TTL, time to live indexes. Uh, it's a very useful feature, but you need to be, like, it's very useful, but if you're trying to delete or run, create a TTL in a huge database with a lot of documents, you can easily um, make your database go down with like a, a huge delete or something like that, because each delete is gonna cost the same as a write for the database, so. Uh, it's very useful if you want to expire your data after 24 hours or after, I don't know, maybe a few months. And for every minute, a TTL round will start and start deleting your, your documents. This is, it's very useful, but just take care if you are trying to delete a lot of documents at the same time. Um, as a quick review, uh, index are good if well uh, used. Um, avoid creating more than indexes that you require in your environment, so because the cost is going to increase, the right cost is going to increase. Uh, use the right index for your application, so if you don't need to have a compound indexes, uh, don't create it, because it's going to use disk and memory as well. And if you try to index all your collections, like all the fields your collections, you just have a lot of junk indexes there, it's, it's not going to be useful. And of course, you need like a, a good processor and memory enough to work with your data, working data set day by day. 
So uh, that's all. Uh, do you have some questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, for the TTL indexes, can you adjust how often this weekend goes by weeks every week? Sorry? What? For the TTL indexes, can you adjust how often the sweep hand goes by like every minute? And you can disable uh, for the TTL, but you, can't. I, you can change like the how many seconds. Oh. Yeah, it's like 60 seconds for each round. Okay. Maybe it's a feature, like, but right now in the, the last version, it's not possible yet. I can be wrong, I can check that, but until the last version that I work it, it's in, we can change that. We can disable this thread only. Sorry? Does disabling the update uh, or the... Uh, yeah, does that allow for delete, large-scale deletes to occur uh, in a better way? Or yeah. It yeah, it's going to like, uh, instead of having a peak of delete, it's going to delete like in small chunks probably because uh, you're hitting. But if you have a peak of, I don't know, maybe 1,000 documents at the same time, it's going to slow down as, the same as a delete. Right. So th there's no... So Yes, it's low down the same because you are paying the, the price to update the B trees and everything else. So, there's. for um, the compound indexes, let's yeah. say you have a compound index that has three fields A, B, and C. Yes. And if I do a query on A and B, I can use the same compound index and just skip C, right? Yes. What about if I do a, a search on A and C without with B in the middle? Uh, it, it's gonna scan the whole B and use C as well. As as long as you're using the first uh, value of the index. It's going to use, put uh, in your X plan, we're going to see uh, using the A, the B is going to show mean and max, which means it's reading everything, okay. and then it's filtering by the, the C. Okay, but what if I query only includes A and C, it doesn't include B? So it, it's going to work, yeah. It, it should work. So it should I, work. So as long as I have um, a union of the, if I have a union of these, of these fields, and my query fits within that union, that, it should use that index. I don't get it. So yeah. there's when I, when I run queries, there's going to be a certain set of fields yes. that I'm going to use. And if I have a query that covers those the fields I need, uh, those fields, then um, even if it has extraneous fields that's in the in the index, it, that that index is still going to get used. Yes, uh, as long as you have the first uh, value of your index is is a good candidate. So if you are right. if you index by A B C. And if you are using just A, doesn't matter what comes after or at the middle, okay. it's going to use the advantage of this index. So if, if, I, if I query by A and C, if I have an index for A, B, C, it'll use it? Yes. So it's only the first one that's special, not the other indices? No. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost a little bit more because it need, needs to load the whole index, but it's going to take advantage of indexes. But it can't skip, it can't skip A. So if I have no. a query with just C, and I can't use A, B, C. No. Basically, it works like MySQL. Yes, that's the same. So the first, the first entry is special because that one has to match your query. Yes. But the other ones don't. Yeah, but you don't need to put in order. Uh, Mongo will split the order, so it doesn't matter if A is the first. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I know about that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It splits the order. Oh no, it doesn't matter. Uh, for like. The order when you do the when you write your query, yeah. it just doesn't care what the order you write the query in. Oh, for yes. the order you have your index in, it doesn't. It's matter. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's all, guys. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Question, uh, about the text-based indexes. Does it? I mean, if you have large text fields, how, is, is the index is based on what of that text? Um, the entire text, or the if you are using the full like the text is going to index everything. It's going to use a lot of. Uh, Disk and memory yeah. because it's gonna read the whole yeah so there's no way to put like slice of the right. document like MySQL can you can do something like that but you no know, not now right. yet yeah so going back to my previous question yes let's say I have um, A B C for one index yes and I have A B D for another index sure and I'm querying on um, I'm querying on eight. If I'm querying on, if I have, let's say, oh, I'm sorry, let's have one index. It's A, B, C, D. Okay. That will cover both A, B, C, and A, B, D being queries. So I can, I, I can merge those two indexes together and just make A, B, C, D for an index. And then yeah, as long as you're using A, yeah. As long as you use A first, yeah. it doesn't matter, rest will pick up. Yes, they will reorganize to help you to get a, a better uh, performance on that. So mostly you want these long compound indexes to cover all the fields you need. And then you just cover it with one. Yes, of them. and if you are using R, you can use two index at the same time. So we're going to merge the index and 
work with uh, index intersection. So if you have an R at the middle and two different indexes to cover one part of this R and the other part of the R, it's going to use indexes for both. So this is the way that we use merged indexes. Okay. So yeah, that's all, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>